I am currently at the Schoolmore Cemetery in Bradford. Now, before I kick off this vlog, what does Battle of Trafalgar, St Luke's Hospital, which is 10 minutes up the road from here, and the Schoolmore Cemetery have in common? You will find the answer of that question towards the end of this film. Now, not many people know that the uh, St Luke's Hospital in Bradford used to be known as the uh, Bradford Union Workhouse. And as you can imagine, there'll be all sorts of characters and personalities walking through the doors. Now, this blog is basically about one particular character that lived at the ripe old age of 101. And just before he died at the workhouse, he left an extraordinary claim. Now we are going to pursue that claim and find the evidence whether this old fella was senile, so to speak, or wasn't quite sure what he was saying at the time. So I'm gonna rush off to St. Luke's Hospital now and meet a couple of local lads who are popular on our channel, as you, as you can see from our previous videos. And um, they will talk about the workhouse, the history of the workhouse, and we shall trace the uh, footsteps of this particular personality and myself finally will bring you back to the Schoolmore Cemetery and take you to an obscure area where not many people know that it exists and you'll be amazed with the find. We're currently in the grounds of St Luke's Hospital and what a lot of people might not realise is this building behind me, one of the original buildings, was actually a workhouse in Bradford. It was relocated here, the whole workhouse operation, and this land was a 14 acre piece of land that was known as Horton Park, and it was bought for 14,000 pounds. And in 1850 to 1851, the building behind me was constructed at a cost of 7,000 pounds. Now, it was designed by Lockwood and Mawson, the eminent architects who designed many of Bradford's fine buildings, um, Kergate Market, the Town Hall, the Will Exchange, you know, you could go on and on and talk about what those guys built. And they also designed this. So what we have here is um, an archive illustration of the workhouse. And originally, where we're stood now, there was like a reception block that had an arched opening. And this main building that you can see here in the illustration is what's currently standing here behind us. By 1920, it had been established that there was actually a bit of a, a shortage in Bradford regarding hospital facilities. So a decision was made to transfer all of the able-bodied inmates of this workhouse to other premises elsewhere in the city, and only the ill remained here. But not too long after that, around 1930, the whole institution, if you like, of workhouses, it was actually abolished and a decision was made that those less able to take care of themselves, they would actually be taken care of by the government. By 1920, the Bradford Union Workhouse um, had changed its name to the City of Bradford Municipal General Hospital, which eventually became known as St Luke's. And Although the main body of the workhouse still stands, in 2010 or thereabouts, various buildings which had been added to the workhouse were demolished um, for things like car parking and what have you. But we've got something here dated 1905, which probably belonged to one of those demolished buildings. And I'd be interested to know what BUH actually stands for, so if any of the viewers have a clue about that, or any knowledge, if they could put us a comment, that would be very helpful. So, this is where our unique story begins. Um, Bradford Workhouse. Now, a lot of people uh, might not know where the workhouse used to be. Uh, this behind me was the second workhouse, which is St Luke's Hospital. But we have to go right back to 1738, uh, uh, to the point where the first workhouse was uh, at um, sort of the Barker End area of Bradford and I have an image here it's a hand-drawn picture of what the original workhouse used to look like at Barker End 
Now, um, what happened was um, this was a place for people that were destitute. They would go and do various tasks there and get paid. Uh, but their accommodation uh, was basically the reward for doing work for all sorts of things in the local area. So you might have uh, basket making, um, all sorts of tasks uh, which some people would see as beneath them but the workhouse would provide that service and just here we have a, an example of how tough it was at the workhouse because that is a coin a penny and it's from 1812 and would have been issued to anybody that was working at the workhouse and it was to pay for accommodation so they were paying people um, with their own money to stay in their own facility so you were always stuck there you could never spend them outside of the workhouse so you were literally in a loop continuous loop um, like I say that one's from 1812 now as our story progresses uh, eventually uh, the workhouse was too small and we needed to um, improve the size and location and this was agreed uh, as a design for the new Bradford Workhouse, which is the Bradford Union Workhouse. And as you can see, we're stood sort of there. But if you look, there used to be buildings here, which are now gone. All right, let's zoom across and have a quick look. So these pieces of grass used to stand a building. So it was an entry point. And as you can see, that doorway there is the one that's just there. It's across there. Yeah. Now, the Bradford Union Workhouse, for anybody that didn't know, it was on a piece of land which was a park. So going right back to the, before the 1850s, there was a park in this location. And it was obviously selected because of the size of the area uh, for expansion. And uh, if we move on to the next, you can see how it gradually started to build. So we are stood uh, roughly there in that sort of courtyard because these buildings have been demolished and that's the front door of St. Luke's Hospital. Eventually, that was its final outcome. Now, not a lot of people know this as well. Um, as it moved on from being a workhouse, uh, during the First World War, it became one of the main war hospitals in the area from 1914 onwards. So there was a, a huge amount of soldiers from all over the country and sometimes the world came here uh, to be uh, looked after and uh, given medical treatment. Uh, for all kinds of ailments due to the First World War. So, our story now is based on something that was found in a newspaper. And what we have is an article. Now, I can read it out if you like. It says, Death of a Trafalgar Hero. Jane Nuttall, who fought with Lord Nelson at Trafalgar, died at the Bradford Workhouse recently. Now suddenly alarm bells started ringing because was this a tall story or was it actually real? Um, so we needed to investigate this because if it's actually a real story then we have somebody that's uh, pretty important in history. Um, so we moved from talking about the workhouse where he died and then we'll just continue with the story. James Nuttall, um, again, what's amazing about this article is that it says that he died uh, aged 101 or 102 as it states on here but uh, a lot of things weren't adding up so we said he was born in Bradford um, and he'd served with Lord Nelson at Trafalgar so was he on HMS Victory? A lot of it sounded like Maybe it was just an old man, sort of, uh, I don't know, not playing to the camera because I want the camera, but actually 
the you know when when they put this together he was telling stories about his life in the Royal Navy how he joined early and ended up in 1805 being at the Battle of Trafalgar it's quite a lot of claims there and what I wanted to do was try and prove it so what I've done is is look into the the archives and again newspapers it kept bringing it up about him being born in Bradford uh, 1780 uh, joining the Royal Navy as a boy and he was at the Battle of Trafalgar again it's all hearsay so how do we prove it so ignore the crows in the background <laughs> yeah yeah I think uh, James is here giving us a bit of a <laughs> yeah so looking through the archives of the you know sort of uh, official records I found James Nuttall and it says yep he died aged 101 not 102 he was born roughly 1781 right. um, and he died in March 1882 so we proved that this chap did exist then in the 1881 census this is for the Bradford Union Workhouse and if you look it says inmate so these are all inmates and as we get down we've got James Nuttall he was a widower it claims in 1881 he was 83 right so not 101 right there you go so then the the sort of this thing about um did he really have his full marbles i suppose that's a nice way of putting it because it, there are all these different conflicting things uh he was a wool coma uh at the, well before he went into the workhouse by the looks of things but he was also born in burnley in lancashire right. not as, as bradford. Also bradford right so i don't know whether or not he was coming over by saying he came to bradford and it's got mixed up in that conversation but we've proved that yes he was here that is him yeah so where do we go from there so this is where our story continues uh james nuttall um what i wanted to do was prove that he was in the navy next because that was something that wasn't mentioned and looking at this here i found uh, in the national archives just a reference to Mr. Nuttall, age 23, and it says Captain's Clerk, or Clerk, depends how you want to say it. Um, he went to see, obviously, the sick bay in 1804, um, whilst in the Royal Navy, and uh, nearly, nearly got discharged from the Royal Navy then for his ailments. But then this is where it gets interesting, because... He pay, in his article he claims that he was with this man Horatio Nelson so um, it's quite a big bold claim and again we don't know whether or not because he was very old age uh, whether or not the stories were true or not so again doing a little bit more looking around you'll find that in 1805 was uh, the Battle of Trafalgar and I've been lucky enough to actually go and see HMS Victory so we're talking about giving you a bit of a, a sense of what kind of ship that James served on and it would have been like that inside that's that's inside Victory that's the uh, the guns one side so you get a feel for the cramped conditions but he would have been looking after the the, the, the daily records of the captain so he would have been further up at the back where the captain would have been sleeping and living so you see there that's victory down in portsmouth so this chap was on a ship very much like this one so again proving it how do you prove that he was actually at the uh, battle of trafalgar now i have been through the records of the ships and have we have a crew list here from 1805 and HMS Leviathan was a 74 gun um, ship and as you can see you've got your captains, lieutenants, everybody listed 
And just by chance, if I turn the page over, oops. <clears throat> this is the official list. This yeah. is the official list from 1805. As you go down it, just there we there have is. the captain's clerk, James Nuttall. So he's a real person a real and person. he was really at the Battle of Trafalgar. Wow. Amazing. And that's your proof. So, yeah, James uh, was on the Leviathan and we have a plan here. This was just something I found on the internet to give you an idea that Leviathan, that's HMS Victory, the flagship with Nelson on. And he was just there on that particular vessel. So the captain's clerk literally had to look after all the records on the ship. So he would have been very close to the captain. Um, the actual ship, again, looking online, that's a cross section of the Leviathan. Not as big as the Victory, I, I don't think, from, from my limited naval knowledge, but uh, you get a feel for, that's the vessel. Yeah, that's a good illustration, yeah. Okay. And that is a, a model of the Leviathan. As you can see, very similar colours to the Victory down yeah. in Portsmouth. So now you've got a sense of what this man yeah. was actually travelling on in a, in a major battle, the Battle of the Nile. Uh, battle of the Nile was first and then you got the Battle of Trafalgar. And Trafalgar is uh, kind of better known really. And you've got Trafalgar Square in London yeah. with uh, Nelson's column. Now, this chap, this was the captain of the Leviathan. So again, it's giving you an idea of the age of our James Nuttall and the style. So this was Captain Henry William Bainton and he is listed quite importantly. Um, he died in 1840 and he's actually buried in Bath. Bath, right. So you can just make out there, it's quite a, an impressive gravestone, family headstone, everything. And he, he had quite a distinguished career, did the captain after he became an admiral. So he would have been on quite a big payroll. Uh, he received medals, a pension of 3,001 per annum for good service. So he was quite a wealthy man, uh, was the captain. Um, so it gives you a sense of class as well. Um, some of the medals that were out there that were given to people. This is actually for a different ship, but everybody received uh, medals if they were uh, allowed to receive them and our man should really have received <coughs> a naval general service medal right see if he claimed it you used yeah. to have to claim your own medals okay now you can see there it says trafalgar it's the trafalgar bar on the medal and just to give you an idea of how important this chap is one of these medals has recently sold for nine thousand pounds so they are very sought after and this gentleman james uh needed bringing to the forefront so we've proved that he existed we proved that he was in the royal navy we proved he was on the hms leviathan yeah. and now we're going to show you roughly where he is so in schoolmore cemetery there is an area called the conservation area it's a wooded part, as you probably have gathered from where we stood. And to look at it, it's just a piece of overgrown land, you know, for wildlife. Um, now, we've got Imtiaz to thank for this because he looked through the records. We didn't actually know where James had been buried. So he looked through the records at Imtiaz and he, uh, well, he found him. James, not all. Schoolmore Cemetery is in section 6, number 337. Now interestingly, when you look on the plans for Schoolmore, there isn't a section 6. It stops at 5. And we didn't know why. Now, this next picture illustrates that this area of land contains thousands of bodies. Mm. And I mean thousands. Each plot has maybe up to 10 people in each 
and where we're stood now we're actually stood on people um yeah it's quite amazing now looking through the records we we found that either side of the burials during during that time most of them were inmates from the bradford workhouse yeah and our man james nuttall is buried in here somewhere and he hasn't got his own grave he's not on his own it's a pauper's grave pauper's grave so when you compare it to his captain that he yeah, served yeah. during the battle of trafalgar uh he's in here somewhere yeah. so what, what i did was i had a look at the plan that we'd got and i superimposed it on a modern background so we're stood roughly here at the minute and as you can see somewhere in the middle of there is our man james in, across there yep in, so what we'll try and do we might have a look and see if we can't pace it out mm -hmm. um it may be possible it might not be but we'll, we'll give it a go right uh it would be nice to at least try and pay his respects sure sure to a, a point that um it's been made invisible really yeah, by the yeah. overgrowth in here we'll have a walk around and get a sense of the area yeah that's fine so there's nothing sinister about it not being shown on the map so no but obviously the passage of time people come here and just have a wander around yeah. we go around the graveyard for whatever purpose you know doing research or just a nice walk uh this has just been left but there's nothing to say that this is a graveyard there's no, there's no mm, signs there's yeah. nothing at all and there is literally thousands of people in here i've seen people come here and have their sandwiches yeah and well, little, they, do, little do they know of company with them yeah oh um, yeah so i mean we are probably within this area we might even be walking on james now. yeah but we could give it a go at trying to pace it out um let's see if we can uh, mark the spot just just temporarily uh, so you can see okay sure so as you can see mark and andrew are just trying to figure out where the resting place of jam nuttall may be it's a difficult one but we're just going by the the burial plans and records So I'm just walking through this uh, little conservation area. It'll give you a sense of uh, basically how bad it is. Okay, so we've got the superimposed plan here and our reference point is the circle and there it is. You can just make it out. You know, yeah. it's, it's time acts over. So, and as Andrew said, this is going to be approximate, but you know, we'll, we'll try our best to, uh, to pinpoint it as near to it as we can. So, um, we're now looking at the circle and the plan so by my estimations i reckon i need to start to be at this point roughly about here and andrew calculated um we need to walk in that direction about eight plots okay so i'm gonna try and do this as uh, gracefully as i can um each plot is about six foot so here we go One. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So there's Andrew there, who's going to uh, continue the search. So we're roughly looking about here, Andrew. Yep. Okay. It's a. Uh, it's going to be a bit like playing battleships. It is. It's just like battleships, which is quite ironic for the subject. Uh, that's where 
we think the body line starts where Mark's standing yeah, yeah. so Mark now marks the spot yes <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna try and do 13 down so it's, it really is by chance is this that you see it yeah time. so people were buried right up to the boundary that's if the records are correct so you've got one two Thirteen, yeah. So what I'm gonna do now is go across and I can just make out Mark. Yeah, so Mark's just behind there. Yep. Yeah. Um so cross reference. Cross through the conservation area. Yeah. And there you go. I, I can see you just about. Yep. Yeah. Right. But this is in this area, right? This yeah. is the best we're gonna do because like I can say He's actually in this grave with I think another nine other people. It shows you that the Admiral with his posh grave and now we've got James Nuttall, ex-Royal Navy, a hero and he's somewhere in here buried with thousands of people. It's uh, it's quite quite shocking. Yeah, it is really, quite haunting because, actually, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he was a vital part of the ship, the running of the ship. Uh, what he did after that, I've got one last record which gives you a little bit of an idea that um, it does mention in the article that he had children and um, his children uh, in their 70s ended up in the workhouse as well. Right. So we know that at some point he got married and I did find in 1824 um, He's actually here, um, James Nuttall, sailor and a bachelor. Right. And he got married in Burnley to um, a Mary Barber, I think it says. So you're back to Burnley. Yeah. 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 So there's still confusion about was he born in Bradford or was he born in Burnley? Maybe that's the confusion. He's uh, nearly 100 years old or 100 year old. We don't know if he's 80, 102. Yeah, yeah. Is confusion kicking in? He got married in Burnley, but was he actually still not from Burnley? We just don't know. Mm. It's it's very, it's it's an old man's ramblings, as they say. Yeah. But as loose threads there that sort of tie up. It does. Yeah. It does tie together. Yeah. So he's claiming he's from Burnley. He got married in Burnley, but did he come to Bradford to find a job and end up in the workhouse because he couldn't find anything? So just for this film. We thought we'd pay a little bit of a tribute because we think this is the location of a war hero from the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805 and there's nothing to say he's here, there's nothing that marks the grave, he's buried with other people from the workhouse and well just put this together just temporarily for this film. Okay, so we about the honours. Thank you. There you go. Just put that there. Rest in peace, James. Hopefully, we brought you back to um, to the memories of people because uh, that's the trouble these days. These things get lost in time, and it's been a bit of an honour to find something that could have been a complete lie in a newspaper but prove it's actually real and the person was real and he wasn't just an old man in the workhouse just pretending to be somebody who wasn't uh, people back then might not have believed him but we give him a chance and we think he's here and if anybody should be remembered it should be a decorated war hero very similar, I'm afraid, to what it is these days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people come back from conflict that are living on the streets. It's a very similar situation. That was the story of James Nuttall. Definitely a Trafalgar hero in our eyes. He travelled the seven seas, so to speak. Had many, many interesting stories to tell his mates. But look, after all that adventure, where he's ended up.
in a pauper's mass grave in a forgotten section of Schoolmoor Cemetery. I hope you enjoyed this little episode. We'd love to hear from you. Any comments you'd like to share with us about this story or any other story we've done in the past, we'll be very interested to hear from you. So until next time, peace out. <laughs>